my name is Jill and this is uh, the end of two weeks of uh, producing ketones and three weeks of this process and uh, what I'm doing is I'm applying the idea of ketosis and fasting to a famine food shortage or a survival scenario so this isn't your regular video about you should you do keto intermittent fasting or fasting in general uh, I am specifically making these videos about uh, real life so imagine Venezuela uh, imagine any kind of starvation scenario or famine we're talking about what it means to understand your body in that context so we're gonna take a quick breath I'm a little spacey and we'll see you on the other side so I just wanted to set and clarify the stage that we're standing on, the reason that we're talking about this and the reason I'm sharing this process with you. So today really kind of marks the official two weeks of having ketones. And uh, there's, uh, I've been continuing to research this process, but I've also spent the last two days at a high level of physical activity. Uh, and again, this morning, and I wanted to uh, factor that in. And I'm going to link below the story of a guy who... Uh, decided to, to just eat pemmican, which is fat and uh, lean meat, uh, as a survival process and being in ketosis while he was on a 38-day snowshoe trip in the Arctic. So it doesn't get any more hardcore survival than that uh, in addition to the cold climate. So I'm going to uh, put his story below if you're still interested in learning about these ideas more than in my scenario where everything is still pretty easy and I think that's you know one of the critical things so I have a couple points I want to make uh, one is uh, I'm doing this in a low stress situation so there's no external stressors like I think I'm gonna die uh, there's issues with getting the right foods but there's no food shortages so uh, this is a protected environment in terms of of understanding this process. So I've been doing some more research uh, and in terms of what indigenous people actually ate, uh, not just uh, in the last few hundred years, but really how their food processes and lifestyles were prior to Western civilization. Really interesting. Uh, I've been looking at uh, this idea of uh, more specifically in terms of metabolic agility uh, and how do you flex in and out of both uh, both glucose and uh, ketone burning for fuel. Uh, and I've been looking at this at a very practical way. Is it sustainable? So uh, I want to back up and talk about uh, the first thing I want to talk about why uh, this is a process that is beneficial to understand uh, from a survival perspective uh, with this little story that many of you have probably heard and when it, we had the Holocaust and there was a point and I think it was in Poland and Warsaw I'm not 100% sure but uh, a group of uh, survivors were found Holocaust survivors who had been in a concentration camp extremely emaciated high level of starving uh, very little access to food no access to fat and protein most of those situations people were just given bread or broth and upon being found by the Allies, they were given food. And it is that point where many of them died because their body was unable to process uh, a large amount of food. So they survived this horrible scenario, but because they didn't understand their basic physiology, uh, they got to eat and that is what killed them and that sort of makes my point is I'm not doing this uh, because I want to be part of a fad or because I think either glucose or ketones is right I'm doing it because there are, I believe some very real-world applications may be coming down the road towards us and uh, the reality around that is that if you're in the crisis it's too hard to deal with a lot of these processes while you're in a crisis state uh, just like when you're starving and you see a lot of food, those survivors couldn't stop themselves from wanting to eat. Everything in their body said eat, their mind, their heart, their spirit, I want to eat. But had they understood, they would have been able to pace themselves and been okay. Uh, which takes us to the body only has two fuel sources. It can feed or it can survive off of glucose and it can survive off of ketones. And here's the important piece of information about that. You can produce 
ketones, but it doesn't mean your body can use that fuel until it becomes adapted, that's that keto adaptive word, to using that fuel. In the same way that a gas engine, uh, a car engine can use uh, leaded fuel, or unleaded fuel, and diesel, but that engine can't run on both, it runs on one or the other. Uh, and the human body, in its wisdom, can run on both types of fuel, but not automatically. And this is probably the only time in our uh, history where humans have had 24-7, 365 access to glucose as our only fuel source. So our bodies don't know how to use ketones for fuel unless we teach and train them to do that. So why is that important in a survival scenario? Because most survival food is pure carbohydrate. Uh, here's the, the, so this is the next piece of information, is that everybody who's planning for their survival has absolutely no idea what kind of scenario will unfold. We don't know. The only thing that we know is something may happen, as we've seen witnessed, you know, in Cuba, Russia, Argentina, Venezuela, China, uh, Vietnam, all North Korea right now is having a famine. The only consistency throughout our historical known time is that there are periods of civilization where humans don't have consistent access to food. If something happens to our food supply, what food we will have access to. And what happens when you are in a glucose burning state and you're producing ketones, your body is shifting into starvation mode. But because it doesn't know how to use those ketones, it starts stripping your muscle away and leaving your fat because your body will protect your fat until the last moment and breath because that is its most precious fuel source. So asking your body to become keto adaptive, ketone fuel adapted is like swimming upstream in molasses. Your body doesn't like the idea of using your fat because in many ways it's panicking because that's its last ditch effort. That's how you survive. Insulin will keep you alive because in times of uh, harvest, when there's a lot of feast, there's extra food, insulin creates fat so that when there's famine or starvation, you can have access to that fuel. In the same way uh, that we store cans of food, in the same way that we save money, uh, your body fat, your insulin creates body fat to save your life if you become in a survival scenario, which is why I hate this demonization of uh, certain things about our body, you know, insulin or uh, cortisol, all these things. Everything in your body has a function. So the third thing I just wanted to share uh, is that I uh, was doing a lot of physical activity in the mornings and uh, and I start early, so uh, I get up between 4 and 4.30, and I'm moving uh, at a very early time. But I still pooped out around noon and bonked, for those of you who know that term, uh, where I couldn't physically really move forward. And even eating with some vegetables wasn't really enough to bring me uh, back around. Now, salt helps. I keep forgetting to take salt. But the truth is, and, and that's what I found in that guy who shared his story, is that uh, eventually, uh, you become more sustained in your energy, but he really noticed a vast difference between how he was functioning on this Arctic snow trip versus everybody else on his team was functioning. Uh, and he really spoke to the fact that it either everybody needs to do it or nobody needs to do it because there were such vast differences. So uh, I encourage you to read that if this era, if this idea is of interest to you. And uh, and really, you know, when looking back over the indigenous tribes, what people did, you know, thousands of years ago, uh, we can't really have that conversation because nothing about that world is relevant to the world today. Uh, they didn't eat the muscle meat; they ate the organ meat. Uh, they did eat grains and beans, but they were fermented and done through uh, different processes. They ate dairy when they had access to it. The, the point that I really take from that is goes to that we have two sources of fuel. 
the problem isn't what we're eating it's what the food is like now processed uh highly uh very unnutritious uh very non-natural uh, and we have not, no ability to bounce back and forth between these two states you know when in summer and fall where we had lots of food we packed on extra weight to get us through winter and spring where our body had to convert and be able to use access to that fat so we just don't understand how people used to live because we have no ability to connect with how food was actually used as a fuel source uh, you know, my message is to get off of this uh, religion about there's only one right way to eat. Get on to understanding your body needs fuel. It has two sources of fuel. And the more you understand about how your body personally utilizes that fuel, what works best for you, what happens when you don't have access to that fuel, uh, because I'm going to guarantee you, if you're starving to death and the only thing somebody's offering you is beans and rice and you haven't eaten for three weeks, you're going to want to eat that beans and rice. So uh, I'm trying to bring a reality check back into this discussion about the purpose of food as fuel and using the two primary sources, ketones and glucose. And how do we, the only way we can understand that information is to have the experience. Uh, you can read about this stuff all day long, but the actual experience like I'm having right now, testing my limits, seeing how I react uh, through each of these stages, that is not information that anybody can explain to you. You can only understand it through personal experience which is like the foundation of everything I'm trying to do here. So uh, that was a big old long explanation. I planned to do just a little short video. <sighs> what can I say? Here we are. So uh, we're going to take a deep breath and I am going to see you next time.